In this video, we're looking at section 1.2 of the student uh, manual, and uh, it's going to be some information about introduction to logic. Please notice, as in all the sections, there'll be a learning a list of learning outcomes. Be sure that you've reviewed those, and that you come back and think about your own thinking, a little bit of meta thinking about uh, have you obtained those objectives at the end of the section. Here's the things that you need to do to complete this section. This video will have a reference right here. Uh, there's the second video that you want to be sure and watch. You need to read the section. Now there's more to just reading the section. The section also has some tables and other things that you need to fill in. Sometimes uh, one of these videos will help you with with details there. And there's a, a, some homework section at the very end. Okay, let's get started. Here's the key idea. We're going to be looking at Boolean logic, Boolean algebra. We're going to pay attention to what a proposition is. It's a statement that is either true or false, but not both. <clears throat> we'll denote statements with a with the variable lowercase letter we won't sometimes we won't be so concerned about what the statement is as just the the algebra the boolean algebra of the truth and the falseness of of statements and how they're connected so let's look at these examples to see if we can identify <clears throat> when we've got a proposition one is a prime number now that's a statement that's either true or false. In this case, that statement happens to be a false statement. One is not a prime number, but it is, but that statement is a proposition. What is an equilateral quadrilateral called? A very interesting question, but it's not a proposition because it's not something that is either true or false, but not both. Factor the expression x squared minus 4. That's a command, a direction. It's, it is uh, not a proposition. 3.14 is a rational number. That's something that is happens to be true. It is a proposition. It's a statement that happens to be true in this case. There exists a prime number between 1,000 and 1,010. Well, that statement is either true or else it's false. Either there is at least one prime number between 1,000 and 1,010, uh, or there are no prime numbers in between there. I'm going to leave the truthfulness of that statement, whether it's true or false, up to you. But, the, but it is, that statement is a proposition. Uh, 3 plus 4 is equal to 6. Well, it's a, a statement. It happens to be a false one, but it is a proposition. X is equal to 7. <coughs> uh, it, it's not a proposition. It, the problem is we don't know, we don't know what X is. Uh, if X was really 7, then that would be true. If X is is uh, not 7, then that would be false. So that statement, depending on what x is, ends up being um, true or false. Now we're going to look at some logical operators. Here's the first one. It's negation. There are going to be three key logical operators in Boolean algebra. One is negation. Notice that there are two symbols that, that are used for negation. Uh, this minus with a little hook on it, or this tilde, uh, and in in this text we'll be using the minus with a little hook on it. So a truth table, we'll use truth tables quite often. Here's the simplest truth table. We've got a proposition A. It's either true or false. Okay, so we're going to look at all of the possibilities, and we're going to look at the negation of A. If A is true, then the negation of A is false. If A is false, the negation of A is true. Here's some uh, examples that we might look at. What would the negation of today is Saturday have to be? Well, 
Now be careful here. Some people say today is Sunday. Uh, but but no, that that's not the negation. Today is Saturday. The negation of that is today is not Saturday. Or today is either uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. The negation of today is Saturday is today is not is not Saturday. Two is a prime number. That happens to be a proposition. It happens to be a true proposition. But the negation of that is a false proposition that says two is not a prime number. Now number C is a much more interesting one. All real numbers are integers. Now either that statement is true or else there are some real numbers that are not integers. The negation of all real numbers are integers is there exists a real number, at least one, that is not an integer. I'll let you uh, worry about the truthfulness of those statements. Here are the other two uh, primary connectives in Boolean algebra. One is and, the, and you need to fill out this table. Look at the other video for some details about what happens here. If both statements are true, then P, if P is true and Q is true, then P and Q would be true. If either one of those are false, or if both of them are false, then the statement is, is false. So completing this truth table, the first one will be true and the next three will be false. There's some practice here for you to kind of uh, worry about some details there. Be sure to look at those. Uh, they may well <coughs> show up on a quiz in class. Uh, disjunction is an or situation. We use a V-shape to, to make that connective. And or means that one or the other or both are true. Now that's a problem in the English language. Notice that that's discussed here. Is that the word or is used either as a disjunction, the, the inclusive or, or it's used as an exclusive or. You need to be able to distinguish when, when it's one and when's the other. Here are some examples of that. Uh, you can take Spanish or French as your modern language graduation requirement. Well, I, th I think the or here is, is saying you could do one or the other. You could do both and, and have your modern language graduation requirement satisfied. Uh, so that's an inclusive or. You receive $1,000 rebate or 2.9% financing on the purchase of a new car. <clears throat> now, in this case, they're not going to give you both. This one is an exclusive or. We're going to look at the notation for an exclusive or later in this um, section. But that's an exclusive or, not an inclusive or. It's not a disjunction. You may order soup or salad with your dinner. Okay, another example of an exclusive or. You can order the soup or you can order the salad. If the waitress comes up to you and say, would you like soup or salad with your dinner? And you say yes, she would look at you with a, a quizzical look. Uh, you're, only, you're going to get one or the other, but not, not both. Um, Clean up your room, or you will receive, or you re receive no no supper. Okay, we need to do a little bit of editing there. That word "eat" should not be there. <laughs> uh, we'll talk more about that example in another setting. Uh, some great further examples for you to consider and study in that section couple more things that you want to look at. There are the three primary connectives, the knot, the uh, disjunction, 
uh, the conjunction and the disjunction, the ands and the ors. Uh, here is an example of the symbol that we're going to use for exclusive or. That means one or the other, but not both. So this truth table would have a false, true, true, false. Okay, and we'll use that, that particular symbol, that O plus, to uh, denote exclusive or. Okay, now there's some homework. Be sure and look that over and be set and ready to go with it. All right.